Hey everybody, Dr. Robin McKay here and welcome to this week's episode of Mindset Rx. It's your place to be if you are an emotionally intelligent leader and you're ready to set the tone for a positive, productive, and purposeful week, month, year, life, legacy, all the things. And today's topic is one that is such a common thing that happens to so many high achievers, so many people who are go-getters and A players out there. And that is something that, and it, by the way, it's eye rolling, in fact, eye rolling. So many of my high achievers who come in and, and talk with me about what's going on in their lives and their careers will say that this is one of their top challenges that they don't even ever wanna even talk about. And that's the Sunday scaries. So if you're here with me today, chances are you know exactly what I'm talking about. I want to start by just sharing a story from my own experience. And then if you are here live with me, I'd love to hear from you. If you are watching or listening to the recording on LinkedIn Live, drop your comments in anyway, and I'll come back and respond to you as well. And if you're happening to be listening to the sister podcast, the Mindset Rx podcast, send me an email and let me know what's your experience with Sunday Scaries, because this is something that I think it transcends degree of where you are in your career. Um, it starts out, obviously, early in your career, probably even in college, um, where you kind of feel that welling up of anxiety, usually about midday or so on Sunday before the work week or before the, the next thing that's coming up for, for you in terms of your work priorities. And um, basically what happens is that we waste a lot of our Sundays, our, the last day of the week before we start again on Monday, worrying about what's going to happen during the week. Somebody described it as kind of an anticipation of the tsunami of the tsunami of priorities and stress and frustrations and ongoing, you know, work that you've got going on. And that starts kind of creeping in like right around midday, noon, maybe later in the day. I'm an American. And when I, was younger, we spent a lot of time watching football in the afternoons on Sundays. And it, for me, it was like after the second game of the day. So it was maybe like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I just would start feeling this creeping up of what do I have to do this week. And the anticipation actually pulled me so far out of my moment to moment experience that I could just feel the stress rising and rising, and rising by the time I would go to sleep at night, which, you know, sleep is another thing entirely when you've got the Sunday scaries, right? You can maybe fall asleep, but then I would wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning and not be able to get back to sleep because then my head would be spinning with all the things that I had to do with all the conversations that I needed to have, with, with the drive to work. And I know we're not driving to work right now, actually, um, in, the time that we're, in the time that we're in. But anytime you've got something that's on your mind that just keeps spinning and spinning around at night, that would be something that would be part of that busy brain. It would be part of that whole cluster of symptoms that are associated with the Sunday scaries. So what I want to do today is just to share a couple of my best tips with you on how to beat the Sunday scaries, knowing that, you know, this is an ongoing process of beating the Sunday scaries. I wish that there was a pill that I could give you. I wish that there was an injection I could give you to be able to just eliminate them entirely. But what I have found actually is over time, as you kind of take your Sundays back, and I like to say, make your Sundays sacred, not scary. As we take our Sundays back, we start to, it's not that we're unaffected by what's going on in the work week or by the things that are coming up for us as we're preparing for the week, work week, but we certainly have more creative control over those things. I think that's one of the greatest challenges of the Sunday scaries is that you feel like you don't have any control over it. You can't stop thinking about it. And even if you do stop thinking about it, it's still kind of rolling around in the back of your mind, the things that you have to get done, the priorities, the stress, the pressure, the expectations, the conversations. 
And you'd come off of a, a day or two of reprieve from that. And as soon as you plug back into work, all of that comes flooding back. So this is not an this is not a one a one time deal. In other words, we're not just going to do it one time and get done with it. it. We have to do a practice, and we have to be really conscious and mindful of how we're coming into our Sundays. How and in fact, every day of the week. Because listen, even if we call it the Sunday scaries, it can actually happen every single day of the week, can't it? as soon as work starts encroaching on your consciousness and as soon as you start feeling that rising up or that welling up of emotion, anxiety, frustration, worry, anything like that that's running in the back of your mind that rises up to the front and kind of starts to lead you rather than you lead your experience. That's what we're talking about here today. So let me just give you some tips for how I recommend dealing with the Sunday scaries and then before we end today, what I want to do is a just a brief visualization and meditation on clearing out some of the cobwebs and clearing out some of the hooks and the cords that are, that are in your consciousness that tug at you on Sundays. So one thing that I know people find helpful when they get to Sunday is to actually make a list of all of their priorities for the week. There is something really curative about writing things down, physically writing them down, not typing them into your phone and not keeping a rolling list in your mind because that just propagates the anxiety. But rather than that, write it down on a piece of paper and see what are the priorities for the week. You'll find that you give your mind a rest once it's written down, because the mind just wants to remember it. That's what the mind is doing. So why not give the mind an opportunity to write down all the priorities so that you can visually see them? And you'll find some relief from that anxiety when you write down the list. So you can try that. That would be one thing. Write, all, write down all of your priorities. Another thing that I find helpful is to be able to notice the thought that comes forward. Just, this is just a very basic mindfulness practice. Just notice, oh, I'm thinking about work tomorrow. Oh, I'm anticipating work tomorrow. And then very consciously bring myself back into the present moment. And I'm here now. I say to myself, and I'm here now. So I feel my feet on the ground and I feel my hips in the chair. And I take a breath in and maybe I feel that little cool patch of air right around the edges of my nostrils. So I just breathe in and I bring myself back into the present moment. You can actually think about the Sunday scaries as an ongoing mindfulness practice, a practice of bringing your mind back into the present moment. We just ultimately want to give you a little bit of distance and a little bit of objectivity from the experience that you're having about worrying about what's coming up for the week. And the way that we do that is by kind of isolating that objective part of your mind, the higher part of your mind, the divine and eternal part of your mind, and being able to operate from that perspective and say, okay, I'm noticing this. I'm noticing that I'm thinking a lot about work today. And breathe. Breathe. And just notice and then bring yourself back into the present moment, even as you're watching your mind wander away into Wednesday or Thursday of this week. So just noticing, just create a noticing practice for yourself. But the key to any noticing practice where you're just noticing, being aware of what you're thinking about is that you don't judge it and that you have compassion for yourself. You don't get mad at yourself. You just say, oh, there I go again, thinking about Wednesday. I'm going to bring myself back into the present moment. And you just breathe in and breathe out and bring yourself back in. Another great way of kind of shaking off the Sunday scaries is to get outside into nature. Sunshine, fresh air, feet on the ground, walk around, look around, see what you see, get outside. That clears everything so that you have a fresh perspective. You might still feel the anxiety or the anticipation about the week, but I'll bet after a walk in nature, 
you're going to have a different perspective on it. In fact, what usually happens for intelligent and intuitive people is they actually get basically downloads of information, ideas, perspectives that can actually assist them in approaching their week. And the last thing I really want you to get about the Sunday scaries is that we as humans <clears throat> actually use our anxiety. We use the adrenaline surge that comes from um, thinking about something that's kind of scary in order to motivate us for the, for the week ahead. So in some ways, and you have to tune in for yourself here, but in some ways you can become actually addicted to the fear. And you use that to rev you up to get you started for the week. Well, the problem with that is, is that you can burn yourself out pretty easily. You can burn your system out. You can get into surge capacity super easy. And, you know, the body's only made to be in surge capacity for like a day or two. And yet we've been two years in chronic ongoing stress. So the body is well beyond surge capacity at this point. So anytime you try to scare yourself or try to rev yourself up to work, to get back in the game, to get your head in the game, and you're using fear, anxiety, worry to do that. That just is you tuning into that fear-based system that you've been using probably since you started school, right? Don't fail is something that high achievers learn from the time we were little kids. Do your very best work all the time is something that we've been trained to do since we were little kids. Of course you want to do your best work. But the way that you can do your best work doesn't have to be infused with fear. Because if you think about it, if you're, if you're running, operating primarily on fear, adrenaline, caffeine, sugar, all of those things that we artificially use to rev up our systems in order to focus, in order to concentrate, in order to get back in the game, Think about what you're creating based on that, those ingredients. It's not that you're creating something bad. It just is that those ingredients are by nature infused into your creations. So whatever you're creating, if it's coming from a place of the Sunday scaries, the anxiety, the anticipation, the worry, the fear, the what if, walking around in the bad neighborhood of your mind creates this situation where you find yourself on the gerbil wheel over and over and over again, doing the same thing. But if you're here with me and you're listening to what I've been talking about, I'm guessing that at least part of you is ready for something different, ready to unplug from that fear-based matrix that we've been operating in for generations actually as humans and to plug into something different. But what is that something different? Well, you can't even know what that something different is until you clear your field. I mean, I can tell you what it is. It's love, it's hope, it's optimism, it's flow, it's joy, it's zest for life, it's liveliness. Those are the emotions. If you're, if you're revving yourself up from that place, think about what the results of your creation are going to be. My goodness, how different will it be? And how different will you be if that's what you're using to love yourself up on Sundays rather than the old system of fear, anxiety, worry, concern, frustration? It's quite remarkable. So how do we get there? I can hear your brain thinking that, of course. How, how do we get here? So right now, what I want you to do, and if you can't, if you're somewhere where you can't close your eyes, if you're somewhere where you're, you're driving or you're walking or whatever, just focus in here with that inner, the most inner part of you. Just focus and concentrate and listen to my voice. And let's clear out some of this noise, some of the static in your system. We have to clear out the physical body, 
the stress in the physical body, and that comes over time. But the energy field, the field that surrounds you, also needs to be cleared. Because so much we're picking up on, especially if you're intuitive and you're smart, oof, you pick up on so many things, so many different stations of thoughts, of emotions, of other people's agendas that you may not even be consciously aware of, but your system is. So let's just clear that out right now and give you a fresh palette to work from. And the way that we do that is very simple. Just breathe in and breathe out. Whew. And take another deep breath in and let it go. And then I learned this meditation, oh my gosh, years ago when I was so stressed and I was working in biotech. Such a simple meditation. It uses your, your inner vision. So what I want you to imagine is a beautiful emerald green light that starts at your feet. It illuminates the bottoms of your feet. And then it begins to spiral around your feet and around your ankles. And it's a brilliant vortex of emerald green light that swirls around and swirls and comes up over your calves and your shins and your knees and just keeps swirling. And with it, as it swirls, it pulls out all of the debris, even the debris that's sitting in between your electrons, it's just clearing everything out. You can just see it spiraling in a counterclockwise direction. Just breathe and just imagine that. And now it's at the base of your spine and it's swirling. And you breathe and you breathe. And now it's at your hips and your belly. And it wraps itself around. I'm, if you can see me, I'm like, I'm using my hand to create this image of the vortex around you. And now it's at your chest and your shoulders. And it, with it, it's just pulling everything out all of the hooks and cords, all of the conscious and unconscious thoughts that are in the back of your mind, the conscious and the unconscious fears that are in the back of your mind, the back of your heart, sit in between your heart and your spine, just clearing all of that out. So just keep breathing and just keep imagining this beautiful emerald green vortex of light all the way up around your shoulders and now around your head, swirling and swirling and swirling and pulling out all of the thoughts, all of the burrs under your saddle, everything that doesn't serve just gets pulled out and dissolved and disintegrated with this beautiful green vortex of light. Ah. <sighs> And then watch that vortex of light. It's even going above you. It's going above your head. It's going about six feet above you. And it just is continuing to clear. It's like a brilliant green vortex. And take one more breath in and let it go. And I just want you to notice the difference. Just notice the difference. Some people will say it feels more quiet. Some people will say it feels more peaceful. Some people may not notice any difference at all and that's cool too. But if you're somebody who noticed that, I'm, that vortex is for you. And so you have access to that now. It's been activated in your awareness and you can just bring that forward anytime you want. It just requires your concentration and focus, doesn't it? So you just imagine that beautiful emerald green vortex. And you can always download this podcast episode and just re-listen to it if you need some support. All right, so let's just breathe in and breathe out and come back into your awareness right here and right now. And I will say this about the Sunday scaries. Sundays are meant to be, in my mind anyway, they're meant to be sacred. And I'm not talking about in the religious sense, I'm just talking about a day of rest, 
But a day of rest does not mean like being a sloth on the couch and watching Netflix all day. What it means to me anyway is resting your mind, resting your heart, resting your soul. Giving your soul an opportunity to just be. We spend a tremendous amount of time wanting and doing, wanting and doing. I want this. I'm going to do this. I want this. I'm going to do this. We spend so little time being. And yet our state of being is the most powerful place of creation. It's a powerful place of leadership. Because you're out of the frenetic go, 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 do, 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 want, want, want energy of the world. And you just sit in your place of being. It doesn't mean that you don't do stuff. It just means that when you're doing it, you're doing it from a mindful, conscious place. So beating the Sunday scaries, something that probably needs to be an ongoing conversation if you're listening to this, doesn't it? But I want you to just come back into remembering that the first thing in order to shift your relationship with Sunday is to make a decision to do so. Just make the decision. I am deciding to shift my relationship with Sundays. And by virtue of doing that, then you can shift your relationship with your thinking, with how you feel, with what you do, with how you prepare. All right, so that's enough for today. It's been my joy to be here with you. If you felt like this really served you, I'd love to hear from you either in the comments or I would love it if you're listening to the podcast, if you'd leave a review, that always makes my day and it helps a whole lot of people get the word out about this important topic of the Sunday Scaries as well. I am your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.